memory verse this week is Mark 10 6 which says but from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. Now it's very clear that God made men and women very differently from each other and interestingly these differences aren't purely physical. Our brains are wired different too. So picture this. Women's brains are kind of like a bunch of wires. Everything is all interconnected. And men's brains are like a bunch of boxes. Every thought and idea is separate from one another. So when women think, they think of one thing that leads to something else, that leads to something else, that leads to something else. It's all interconnected. For men, when they think, they have separate boxes for each topic. Nothing is connected because every subject is unique. As you can imagine, this can make it hard for us to communicate with the opposite gender sometimes. It's important to remember that God created men and women differently, but these differences are actually good. In your books, we talked about the importance in God-given beauty in marriage. God created men and women differently so that they can help each other in marriage. God made Eve from Adam's rib. There's a saying that says that God created woman from man's rib, not from his feet to be walked on, not from his head to be above him, but from his side to be his equal, from under his arm to be protected, and by his heart to be loved. Aww. While this isn't biblical, there are some fun truths in the saying. So guys, God created women to be your equals to be there for you and to help you. And women, God created men to be your equals, to be there for you and to love and protect you. But I've gotta tell you something. You are complete and you are whole without a boyfriend or girlfriend. In fact, you're whole without a husband or wife. If you're feeling empty or you feel like you're not whole, the relationship you're missing is not a romantic one. You're missing a relationship with the one who created you. You do not have a boy-shaped hole or a girl-shaped hole in your life. You have a God-shaped hole and nothing else can fill it. Is there proof? Sordra, 1 Corinthians 7, 7 and 8. Go. For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. So, 1 Corinthians was written by Paul, and Paul was a pretty cool, godly dude. And he wasn't married. Paul decided that it would be better for him to remain unmarried so that he could focus on his missionary work. But he says to each, what does he say? He says that each one has his own gift from God. So the Bible says that we don't have to be married to be a good Christian or even a whole person, but most of us will probably get married. Sordro, Song of Solomon 3, 5. Go. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Another version says, do not stir up or awaken love before the correct time. Love and marriage are good and holy in the eyes of God, but love is only good when it's done according to God's laws. We need to make sure that we aren't awakening love before it's time. This goes for both of you, young men and young women. We all need to be careful. To be blunt, guys and gals, no sex before marriage. 
and don't push the things leading up to sex. If you have more questions about this topic, or if you're worried that you or a friend has awoken love before it's time, please talk to your parent or guardian. And if you don't feel comfortable talking to them, talk to your trek leader or talk to me. I would love to search through the Bible for answers with you. Romans 14, 13, go. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. We need to make sure we're lifting others up, not causing them to stumble, sin, or mess up. Another piece of that verse from Song of Solomon is timing. Now, dating is great if you're looking to get married, but it's not something to do just because it seems fun or everybody else is doing it. I didn't date in middle school. I didn't date in high school. That turned out awesome. I'm thankful that I waited to date until I was in college because I thought if you aren't ready to get married, why would you date? Why would you risk awakening love before it's time? There's no reason to push love or to push the boundaries to see how much you can get away with before you mess up. Now back to Genesis 2, 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. How does this verse support what I've been saying? How are we supposed to be whole without this helper, without a boyfriend or girlfriend? Well, God said that it isn't good for people to be alone. In your books, when Adam and Eve, who were different from one another, had a son, he was different than both of them. People are unique and we're created for community. We need others. God made us to be connected. <laughs> some of you are really good at connecting with others and some of you, myself included, need some alone time. But just because we need to be alone doesn't mean we are created to be alone. We still need other people. Ben, come play Legos with me. Ben, Ben, come play Minecraft with me. No. Ben, let's go climb a tree. Hey, what you reading? Hey, can I come? Hey, Ben, can I borrow your rubber band gun? Sure. Hey, Ben, can I borrow your hat? Sure. Hey, Ben, can I borrow your cantaloupe? Sure. Hey Ben, can you take the trash out for me, please? Sure. Hey Ben, can you uh, go get the groceries out of the car? Sure. Hey Ben, can you go scoop the dog, please? Sure. Ben, where are you? Ben, hey Ben, hey Ben, hey Ben. I wish I was alone. Let me ask you this, are you alone? We live in a world that is connected through technology. Cell phones, text messages, videos, social media posts. But does that mean we're actually connected with one another? To put it a different way, do you know all the facts and information about people in their lives? Or do you really know them? Do you know what makes them happy, sad, or scared? Do you know how they talk to God? Do you hear what God is telling them? Did it just fall off? <laughs> it did. And do you share with your friends how you really feel, how you really are, what you're really struggling with? See, that is the real meaning of community. You need people who know you, not the person you create on social media and in class. The real you. You need to know the real. How is the sentence working? <laughs> it's not working in my head. <laughs> and you need to know other people as deeply as you can. God created us to lift each other up and to help each other out. And we need to have real relationships and real connections in order to do this. All right, so men and women are created different. Marriage is something that God made and it is beautiful, but we do not need a romantic relationship 
to be whole. And we need to make sure that we are not awakening love before it's time. We are created for community and God did not want us to be alone. So now, what are we supposed to be doing all the time? Our identities are not wrapped up in what we do, like we learned earlier, but we are created in God's image and God is a hard worker. This is where the word dominion comes into play. Genesis 126 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps along the earth. God wants people to work. He wanted them to work before the fall, which means that work is not a byproduct of sin, but rather something that God created us to do, and to want to do. I know sometimes you can feel like, well, work is work. It's hard to see how taking out the trash, mowing the lawn, or scooping the dog's poop can't be something we are actually created to do. But mankind loves to work. It's in our DNA. Now you might be thinking, well, Miss Shauna, I don't like work. I hate it. I would much rather relax. And yes, me too. I cannot stand cleaning my room. I hate it. <laughs> With a passion. It's never clean. But chores and homework are not the only things that are classified under work. To make the world a better place, I shall be reinforcing the no work law that I just invented. And I will be wandering around telling each and every one of you if you're working and to stop you. No chewing, that's work. No playing the piano, that's work. No building with Legos, that's work. Okay. Sit. No turning the dog, that's work. No working. Genesis 2.15 Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Okay, interesting. Let's skip down to verse 19. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called the living creature, that was its name. Adam's first job was to name the animals. <laughs> That's a lot of work. But it's fun work and it's good work. It's fulfilling. Your memory verse shows your mem <laughs> Your memory verse shows us that Adam's job did not stop after he named everything, but that Adam and Eve had dominion over the entire earth. Dominion means to rule over something, and in this case, there's an idea of taking care of that something as well. Sword drill, you guys are gonna get really good at these. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 10. Go. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Interesting. God has a unique calling for each of us. A calling is a purpose that God has for our lives. What is your calling? That was weird. Why did I do that? <laughs> What is your calling? Do you know yet? If you'd like to learn how to figure out what you're called to do, there's a spiritual gifts test linked in the description box below. 1 Peter 4.10 says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. And 1 Corinthians 12.7 says, To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. If you are a Christian, then you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. The Holy Spirit is completely God and he is powerful. He also gives us special gifts so that we can work, have dominion over the things that he wants us to, and live a fulfilling life. God, I wanna thank you for being with us today as we gather together. Please bless our times in small groups and help us grow closer to you as we have fun together. Lord, thank you for creating men and women differently and for establishing marriage in the way that you did. Give us wisdom and help us in our relationship, both in romantic and platonic relationships. Thank you for making sure we are never alone. And thank you for giving us work to do. God, your work is easy and your burden is light. Help us to discover how you have called us to live and work. And help us to discover the gifts that you have given us through the Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, I got another challenge for you. There's candy on the lines, folks. I want you to polo me the prettiest thing you see this week. Remember, your submissions have to be turned in on polo to me by Friday. You can find me in your small groups list on polo. All right, I love y'all and I'll catch you next time.